Today we're going to look at the latest firearms transfer screen. This is actually a really powerful feature in the system. If I go to bound book, the firearm transfer specifically allows me to accept transfers from other FFLs. So we'll start by looking at the dashboard and the dashboard provides you a quick view of all of your current transfers, what the status is. You can also choose to hide all of the completed transfers if you want to do that. So in this case, I'm hiding four of the transfers that were already completed. This way I can see just the one transfer that's currently open. You'll notice I have a status on it, customer notified, and you can maintain those statuses. Right? I can click the dot 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 menu and click on manage statuses. And you'll see in this case I've got four statuses. That's actually the default that gets shipped with the system. I can edit any status. And you'll notice on the statuses, you can set up to automatically notify a customer via email, notify them via SMS, in order to notify them via text or SMS, you have to have a Twilio account. You can visit our support site help.corware.com and you can search in the knowledge base if you need help setting up your Twilio account. You'll also notice that we have intelligent statuses so if you want to create a different new status um, and you want to separate uh, different types of transfers you can do that just make sure you check the new box if it's new or check the picked up box if this status is a pickup status. All right, to start a new transfer, I can just click on this new transfer. You can quickly search for an FFL if you don't know one. And I can just type in, for example, Sport South. And you'll see all my information comes up. Now, this FFL is already in my system. If I don't have this particular FFL in the system, I could just click on this new supplier button and when I go here you can actually search by FFL alright so in this case I'm going to search for an FFL and you'll notice that it tells me I don't have this FFL on file so I'll go ahead and search and it looks like it just notified me that this is an invalid FFL so let me make sure to grab a valid one alright just type it in properly and you'll notice that it did find this FFL I'll hit OK I can add any information that I want but it will pull all the FFL information that it has on file and you'll see down here it has the expiration and the address as well as the company name. So we'll go ahead and save. And once I save, you'll notice that it goes right back to the firearms transfer, so I don't have to uh, click anything else. It, go, it takes me right back to where I was. The same thing goes when you're entering the customer information for this particular transfer. So I can also search for the customer. And of course, I can add a new customer by just clicking that button. All right, at this point, it's going to ask me to search for the firearm. Again, I can search for an existing firearm if I want to uh, from my current inventory. And again, the purpose of searching for the firearm is simply to fill out the information automatically so you don't have to choose this manually but you can just choose it manually you can type in a description scan the serial number choose a type caliber model and manufacturer so that's completely up to you all right so in this case I've never seen this particular firearm so I'll go ahead and search for it I can scan that UPC code it tells me I've never had this firearm in my inventory and I can search the distributor catalogs 
will show me who has it in stock. And I can just click it. Okay, and that fills all the relevant information out. I can, of course, now scan in the serial number. And at this point, I can just add this firearm to the transfer. And if I want, I can go ahead and process this transfer. But the nice thing is, is at this point, I can also, and I can do this at any point. So I, I can just hit process, and that will create a suspended sale transaction. It will also create the acquisition in the bound book. So all of that's done in one step. Right, and at, at that point, I can contact the customer and let them know that I have their firearm. But it is possible that you receive another firearm from a completely different FFL for the same customer. Uh, you can either pull this transfer up after you're done. Let's say the next day, another firearm shows up. You can pull it up, but you can also do it right here and now, so you don't have to exit out. And I neglected to mention we also can associate a transfer fee, right? And I can default my transfer fee that's in the store configuration. And the default will come up. I don't have a default set, which is why it was blank. But you can also modify the transfer fee. And again, you may want to do this if there's multiple firearms on this particular transaction. Or maybe it's a regular customer that you give them a discount. So you can just modify that transfer fee. So what I can do at this point is I can choose another FFL. And again, I'll, of course, have to keep this customer unless I need to change the customer. Once I process, you cannot change it. You'd have to go in manually to edit the customer information. But again, I can search for a firearm if I want to. And in this case, I know I've got the SIG, I've had it in my store, um, so I can actually choose the particular firearm. It looks like I don't have all. Or let's choose, sorry, I chose an FN. Let's choose this Glock. Okay, I have all the information for this Glock, so I'd have to type all of that information in. Again, when I process this transfer, we'll look at the sale transaction, but the sale transaction will actually have just a generic transfer item on it. Okay, so again, we recommend scanning the serial numbers. So I'll add this firearm. And I can go ahead and process the transfer. Okay, so now I have a new transfer, and we'll quickly take a peek at the bound book. So you can see there's two new acquisitions. So to see that the new acquisitions, we want to go to our transfers bound book because, again, from a best practice standpoint, it's a good idea to set up a bound book for your transfers. This will be done for you automatically if you don't have one set up. And you'll notice here I've got my Glock and my SIG. You'll notice the acquire date of the 28th. And each one will show separately, of course. I can then hop over to my sales screen and we'll just pull up my suspended sales. And the nice thing is I can go to types and just choose firearm transfers. So I've got three of them. And if I look at the one from today, you'll see that I've got two items with two different serial numbers. Both are firearm transfers. And I also added my firearm transfer fee, which again, it does multiply it by the quantity, so keep that in mind. So if I charge $50 per transfer, um, that 
total. Let's uh, unsuspend this transaction and see what the total is. So you'll see here that's I've got a hundred dollars, and it's calculating tax. So the firearm transfer fee was multiplied by two. And at this point, when the customer comes in, I can collect all the information that I need from them, have them fill out the 4473, of course, and transfer the firearms to the customer. As I mentioned before, even after I process the firearm transfer, as long as I haven't completed the transaction, I can actually go and edit. And at this point, I can't change the customer, but what I can do is I can choose an FFL and add another item to the transfer. If you do need to modify anything else, you know, maybe the wrong gun was scanned into the transfer, just keep in mind uh, you can always go into the individual bound book record and if necessary you can delete that acquisition if it was acquired you know maybe someone grabbed the wrong item uh, you can also go into the suspended transaction and make any direct modifications there so this screen just saves you a ton of time with handling transfers into the store and we've modified it significantly so that you can look items up in the catalog you can actually uh, receive firearms from multiple different FFLs for a single customer which sometimes is a common occurrence especially if you've got customers that buy a lot of items on a gun broker so that can happen pretty often so it makes it a lot easier uh, to manage your transfers and it also avoids what used to be the uh, confusion of having to add the firearm into your inventory because it's not really part of your inventory it's not part of your cost of goods sold uh, and that's where it was getting a little confusing so we made it to where the item on the sale on your suspended sale is actually a transfer item that's a non-stock item so it makes reporting easier makes management easier and you still have a dashboard showing you exactly what firearms you have currently in the store that are waiting to be picked up. Thanks for watching this video and keep looking at our YouTube for additional vid videos. If you don't mind, please subscribe and like our videos. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers so we can start doing some live streaming. Thanks so much.